Hello, everyone. My name is Willie Lockett. I'm program director here at Oklahoma Community College Respiratory Care Program. And today I want to welcome you to the next installment of the Oklahoma Community College Evidence-Based Speaker Series. Today I will be sharing with you a best practice video on how to create a rubric in Canvas. A rubric is a scoring tool that identifies the different criteria you use to evaluate an assignment. Rubrics help communicate expectations to students and also help instructors assess students' work fairly and efficiently. Rubrics also provide students with informative feedback on their strengths and weaknesses so they can reflect on their performance and work on the areas that need improvement the most. Now, this video will not cover how to develop a rubric, but it will cover how to create an existing rubric in your Canvas module. So let's get started. So the first thing you want to do is to have access to your rubrics that you plan to use. And as you can see, I have a rubrics already pulled up here on the right hand side of the screen, which I'll be using to develop the rubrics today. And the next thing what you want to do is open Canvas and access the course you plan to work with. If rubrics does not show up in your navigation pan panel here on the left hand side, what you will want to do is go down to settings, scroll down to settings at the bottom, click on settings, click on navigation. Rubrics is here in my on my screen, but if rubrics is not here on your Canvas course, then you will scroll down here to this list of pages and search for rubrics. And what you would do is click on rubrics and you can drag it. So if it was down in the second panel, you would drag it up to the first panel and drop it wherever you want rubrics, rubric to be. And you would simply go down and save it. So now that you've done that, rubric should appear in your appear in your navigation panel here to the left. So we're going to click on rubrics. And what we want to do now is click add rubric. Once you click add rubric, you see that you have a title. And what we want to do is go ahead and give our rubric a title. I'm going to title my rubric, Clinical Practice for Discussion Board. OK, so the next thing you want to do now is add criteria. For my rubric, uh, what I'm going to use for criteria are the categories for this particular rubric. I have four categories for this rubric. Um, I have them here in my rubric already. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and assign those four categories. If you click on the pencil, it allows you to edit that information. So for me, my first category is going to be assignment submission. Now, one of the things you can do if you already have a rubric created, you can easily copy and paste information into the rubric. I will not add a long description to my categories because that information is going to be spelled out in my rating section. So once I add that, add the category in, I'm going to click update criteria. As I mentioned, I have four other four categories. So I'm going to go ahead first and create all four categories now. Now you have an option to create a new category or you can duplicate the previous one. My categories are different, so I'm going to create a new criterion. So my second criterion is going to be content. I'm going to evaluate this assignment also on the content. Okay, again, there is no long description. Third criteria, also a new one. As you can see, writing skills. I'm going to evaluate the students on their writing skills. Okay. And last but not least, the fourth criterion is critical analysis. Again, you can type this information in or you can copy and paste it if you chose to, if you already have a rubric created. Okay, so we have our categories now, which is called criterion here, but I call them categories. Let me correct my spelling here. Okay, so now what we want to do is we want to provide the points for the rubric. 
the first thing you want to do is identify how many points that this assignment is going to be worth. For my assignment, it, the total assignment is only worth 10 points. So for each one of the categories, they are going to be worth two and a half points total. The maximum amount of points that a person can receive will be two and a half points. You have to determine that for your rubrics, how many points that will be awarded for each category, because at the bottom, those points will be added as a total for each category. Notice it is 20 points here. But when I finish, you'll notice that these were the total points will only add to 10. So in order to add what I need here is the performance criteria or how they're going to be evaluated. I'm going to click here on the pencil. The maximum amount of points that a student can receive for this particular category is going to be two and a half points. So I'm going to type in two and a half points here. Um, I'm going to call this category in which the student get the maximum amount of points exemplary. So I'm going to make that my title. Here, I will add a description because I want the students to understand what they have to do to acquire the two and a half points. So that is going to be the indicated description. So students must respond to an original assignment by end of day Wednesday and exceed the required minimum number of responses to other students. And I'm going to click update rating. So now if you'll notice that particular category has an indicator, it has points, and it has the criteria to be awarded those particular points. Now, as I mentioned, there are four cri performance criteria for each category, and I have four categories. So I'm going to go ahead and put in the other criteria for the amount of points for each one. So the next one would only award one and a half points for the next criteria, performance criteria. That particular one I'm going to title as proficient. And I will move down to the next performance criteria, and that will be my description. So in order to be considered proficient, a student must respond to the original assignment by end of day Wednesday and have made the required minimum number of responses to other students. So I'm going to update that. So my third one, well, Students will lose another point for this. This will only be worth a half a point. And this particular criteria I'm going to call requires attention. And here, the criteria for a half a point would be the student did not respond to the original assignment by end of day Wednesday and made the minimum required responses to other students. Now, for zero points, this will be considered unacceptable. Again, I'm simply copying and pasting, or you can type this content in. So the description for this particular performance criteria, which would award the student zero points, would be that the student did not respond to the original assignment and did not make the minimum number of responses to other posts. Now, as you can see here that I've created the category, I've identified the four performance criteria that would award points for each criteria. And if you'll notice in the points category, there's two and a half points for each for that particular category. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate that for the next three categories. I'm going to repeat the process again. They can get two and a half points for this particular performance indicator. If they want to be considered exemplary. The title here, the description would be that that particular student must demonstrate an in-depth evidence, in-depth evidence-based knowledge of the material and understand other students' posts and make relevant, useful comments. I'm gonna update it. 
And I'm going to add an extra criteria. This is only going to be worth one and a half points. This particular title, again, is going to be proficient. I'm going to Google that performance criteria description for proficient. Here, student demonstrating an applied knowledge of the material and understanding of other students' posts and made relevant, generally useful comments. Okay. And again, here, this was only going to be worth 0 0.5 points. This will be considered requires attention. And if you'll notice that once you put a category in or a title in, it keeps the name of that title. So you can just click on it and it'll apply that to the to the uh, rubrics. So here, this particular required attention will be that the student demonstrated limited or inaccurate understanding of the material and made limited contribution to the substance of the discussion by simply agreeing with others, offering unsubstantial personal opinions and or social chatter. And last but not least, what will be considered unacceptable. Would be the student demonstrated poor understanding and poor ability to comment on other students' work and ask meaningful questions. Corrected my grammar. Okay, so again, as you can see, the maximum amount of points that a student can receive for this particular category would be two and a half points. And the points are here in the points category. So we would do the same again for writing skills. Modify here, change the points to two and a half points. Change the title to proficient. And we will go back under the top and get that performance indicator. Here, the posts were clear, concise, and grammatically correct. Okay, we're at the next performance indicator, which will also be worth 1.5 points. We will call that, I'm sorry, this should have, is proficient. As you can see, I made the mistake. The previous category should have been exemplary. I can go back and change that. So here on the proficient, I would say the posts were reasonably clear and coherent and generally grammatically correct. So I'm going to go back and change this and make this exemplary. Okay. So if you make a mistake, you can easily go back and edit and make your corrections when you catch them. So here again, following the same pattern, this is going to be worth zero, worth a half a point. The title here is going to be requires attention. And at this particular time, we are saying that the posts were not focused and were poorly written with grammatical and spelling errors. Update and zero points, which we will say is unacceptable. That the post did not really both did not relate to the discussion content with significant grammatical errors and spelling errors. And we will update that. Okay, so again, now we have the writing skills category completed. Again, it's two and a half points, and we will finally do the same for critical analysis. So here, this will only be worth 2.5 points. The title would be exemplary. We'll go back to the top and get the performance criteria for that indicator. The post reflected the topic with evidence-based material accurately cited. Okay, we'll add the next 1.5 points. This would be proficient. And we will go here 
and it says that the posting reflects the topic with evidence-based material, but may not be accurately cited. And we will follow suit and make this 0 0.5 points. The title would be requires attention. And here we will say post did not reflect the topic with cited evidence-based material. And with zero points, which would be unacceptable, we would here say that the posting are largely personal opinions or feelings without cited statements from evidence-based sources. And we will update the rating. So we will go back and check your rubrics and make sure that all the information that you want is there and that your points add up. That's two and a half points for each category, totaling a 10 point total. And if your rubrics look correct, you would click create rubric. And there you have it. There is your rubric. Now, I want to demonstrate how to assign this rubric to an assignment, an existing assignment. So I have a discussion board post already created in this course. I'm gonna click on discussion board. Increase the size of my screen so you can see. Um, here I'm going to click on week one. When you click on the assignment, next to edit, you want to click the three dots and you want to click on add rubric. So here, if you chose to, you can go through those same steps we just took to create a new rubric. Or if you want to use the rubric you just created, you would click find rubric. As you'll notice, there's a list of courses here that you are assigned to as an instructor. I'm going to the class that we just finished working in. Here's the rubric I just created, Clinical Practice 4 Discussion Board. And I'm going to click on that rubric. Rubric, scroll down to the bottom and click Use This Rubric. Now, when you get to this screen, there are some options at the bottom that you may want to um, particularly use. If you click on the Edit window again, and scroll down to the bottom, there are some options here. Um, you may you want to use this rubric as a grading for an assignment. You want to click use this rubric for grading assignment and use this rubric. So now this rubric is attached to this particular assignment. And if you wanted to grade, you can go to speed grader. Pull this assignment up. You will click widen this out so you can see. So now um, if you'll notice as I mouse over any particular category that applies, if I just click on it, it'll award those points for that particular assignment. And after you've made your selection, it grades the assignment for you and award the points for the assignment. And if you click Save, that assignment is graded and the students have the ability to see their grade and the feedback from you as an instructor. So I hope this has helped you to be able to develop or create your rubrics and canvas and have a nice day.